So, a bit ironically for EU motion, I'm going to try to keep this very simple. Um, I'm going to ask a couple of questions why this will work. I'm going to talk a bit more about why these rights are particularly important for the EU, that is, for the interests of the EU, which we generally should care about in this motion. And why EU is the best possible actor for doing that, actually the only possible actor for ensuring that these things will happen. But I've done that, we will have won the debate. So, before I do that, just to add some tension, I'm going to deal with a couple of points of rebuttal. So the major point we get from the last speaker is a whole thing about there's some kind of contract between these countries and the EU, right? Let's talk about a couple of things here first. First of all, is this contract static? That is, is it a problem we change it? The answer to this is obviously no. The EU has changed dynamically through, from its birth until now, and we have changed labour laws, we have changed a lot of different laws, they've been changed organically, some for treaties, and some by simply imposing these laws on the countries. Paris said this very clearly, this is an inhabitant that present for it, it's awesome. But then we get this idea that maybe it will affect potential states or states that don't necessarily want to be in the, in the EU. We said the EU has a fair amount of stuff to offer to these states. These states generally want to be in the EU. And I want to give it the price to pay when they're already prepared to change their labour laws, when they're already ch prepared to change their economic structure, they're probably prepared to accept some fairly universally acceptable principles about human rights if that means they can be in the EU, rather than to be with like Russia, who probably won't um, respect very many of their rights or their integrity in any respect. So we don't really see that that is a massive problem. Um, we always have to recognise that with the EU, if there is a conflict between these, these countries, that probably means the EU should represent the majority of the values and views held within the EU. Guess what? The majority of people in the EU believes in these kind of values. The majority of people in the EU believes in the right for uh, gay people to marry and in the right for abortion and that we should protect minorities. Therefore, there is a democratic mandate and we are still maintaining the democratic nature of the EU. No, thank you. Um, we get to actually feel briefly since we got back to the backlash, right? Let me just point to the fact that when, they, when the EU um, pushed the new set of labour laws, there was a lot of resistance in Ireland to those because it would destroy Irish industries because somehow in Ireland you need to be able to fire people, right? The thing is, they implemented them and unions grew stronger and all of a sudden people in Ireland, some years later, were really, really fond of them. The backlash was very temporary. It isn't the fact that any time we see any kind of change, there is a massive backlash. It isn't the fact that that backlash is massively harmful. And even if that backlash harmed very influential powers, such as corporations in Ireland that probably are more influential than, than churches in these places, we can still work around them because there is popular support. No, thank you. So, moving on to my point, Jesus, timer, death. Um, so, why will this work? Um, so, for, uh, no, so first of all, as you see, there is, as there are, we've seen any time we've implemented these kind of laws that they have they become normalized, become dynamic, and that's absolutely fine. So, like on the whole note that they, it won't be permanent, and that it will it will already work. Secondly, we have already touched upon a little bit. These countries are their stats, right? These countries Im implement and enforce laws that have been set into place. So even if there is lots of social backlash. Even if there's a situation where maybe some people are reluctant to, um, to exercise these rights, the fact these rights are there means that for the people who would choose to have these rights in, um, executed, to be able to enjoy these rights, they will be available and they can demand them. And they can probably arouse the attention of the media. They can probably arouse the attention of the international community if they don't get these rights once these rights are in place. The comparison we get from the opposition is that somehow there are lots of women out, young women out there who go, well, I can't have an abortion, I have to be pregnant, but on the other hand, I get a more positive narrative about my situation, I get a more positive narrative about abortions. So like this right doesn't really matter that much for me, I don't necessarily need to be able to go get this somewhere because, you know, I'm creating a better narrative. What they haven't answered is why this isn't important for those people who would choose to exercise this right, for those people who would enjoy this right, even if it can't be used for all. We would pro probably say that in as much as people are harmed by these narratives, it happens on both sides of the house. Yes? By creating these dangerous narratives and stories, you're not just creating a story, changing the way people interact with each other, and then that doctors are going to give those abortions out and they're going to treat these people even worse than they have before. This doesn't change anything in terms of how people view homosexuals. This doesn't change anything in how people view abortion. There is opposition to these things 
already. We're not creating that opposition. We are creating a solution for those who happen to suffer massively from that opposition. So, next point. Uh, why is it incredibly important with progressive rights uh, for the EU, right? First of all, this is really important. This happens to be what the EU citizens want, right? Why is this important? First of all, it's important to respect what they want as long as there are lots of countries involved in the EU. As long as there are lots of progressive countries and the EU is supposed to be a democratic project, that's a good thing in itself. However, secondly, it's important because that maintains buy-in for a lot of the Eurosceptical countries right now. We will notice that the current lot of countries like Sweden, like the UK, who are very progressive, are generally being skeptical towards the EU because they don't think that the EU necessarily is active enough in representing the important values. By doing this, the EU just have shows that the carrying values are in place and build the EU and the share of most EU citizens are represented that, uh, that adds credibility for the EU. Thirdly, this is important because uh, in order to... Uh, sorry. Yeah, so when it, um, in terms of these countries as well, it's, in, it's incredibly important to show that the EU is not just about like regulating cucumbers and bananas, right? That, they are actually, that there's an important <coughs> purpose of the EU. The EU is losing purpose Gradually, people are questioning the role of the EU, and it is incredibly important that they reassert that position by doing something meaningful. Finally, um, why is the EU the best actor? Because right now, there's no political capital whatsoever for these countries to do that. Look at Ireland, when there was a free vote in the Parliament for Ireland on abortion, right? Everyone voted against it because everyone feared the backlash that this might cause, which caused young women to die. And we see Croatia, there is a, um, a, a situation there for, um, for gay rights. We similarly see there's very little support, very little capital for these kind of changes. We think these changes are so important that when this can happen on a national level, it is a mandate of the EU to go step in and do that, not because they can do it, because they only want to ensure legal rights. Maybe we're going to change the narrative tomorrow, maybe we're going to change the narrative in 10 years, but until that, these people have a right to be able to execute, at least on a private level, the basic human rights that belong to them as well as any other person, and that's what we're going to debate.